Hey, what's going on YouTube? Chuckles again with another Diablo 3 video. Today, patch 2.1.0 hit hit the servers. It went live today, so I figured I would do um, another build video real quick. Today we're going to be showing off the um, the Jade Harvester nuke build, the, the dot nuke build for the Witch Doctor here. So I do it a little different than most people, and I get the same results. I just feel like... I have a little bit more survivability than others so let's go ahead and jump right into it here so for the skills on my uh, main click the le the left click there my it says secondary but it's actually my primary <laughs> I use haunt with uh, resentful resentful spirits rune so it costs 50 mana which isn't much but it, it gets to be a lot over time so haunt two enemies with spirits dealing 4,000 weapon damages cold over 12 seconds if either enemy dies, the spirit will haunt another nearby enemy. Okay, so that's very important, because that, that rune is a non-negotiable. you got to leave that one the way it is. Next, on my right click, I use Locust Swarm with Pestilence. Costs 300 mana. It's a little more, um, I don't know, mana intensive, mana aggressive. Unleash a Plague of Locust that swarms an enemy dealing 1,040% weapon damage is poison over 8 seconds. Locust Swarm has a 100% chance to jump to two additional nearby enemies. So if you can't get the theme here, what I'm going for is, is the dots to spread as much as possible. On my number one key, I use Spirit Walk with Jaunt. Um, leave your physical body and enter the Spirit Realm for three seconds. While in the Spirit Realm, your movement is unhindered. Your link to the Spirit Realm will end if your physical body sustains 50% of your maximum life and damage. So Spirit Walk with Jaunt gives you movement speed, uh, lets you break out of like prisons and jails, lets you walk through Desecrator and Poisons, it's just amazing. I, I will not have a Witch Doctor build without Spirit Walk on it. Next I use Summon Zombie Dogs with Lifelink. Um, I use this because the three zombie dogs do a little bit of damage, not much. It's not enough to call it a viable like damage source, but your the with the lifelink rune there your zombie dogs absorb 10% of all damage done to you so with this build you're kinda up in the enemy's face you're in usually standing in stuff you shouldn't be standing in so on so forth so I use the zombie dogs in order to survive a little bit longer next on my three key I'm using piranhas with Pyranado. Um it's very mana cost aggressive I guess 250 mana and it has a 16 second cooldown which is kinda killer but what it does if we do it here let me hold shift here see that that will round up all the enemies which is what we're using it for next I go with soul harvest this is the bread and butter cooldown of 15 seconds feed on the life force of up to five enemies within 16 yards gain two percent intelligence for each affected enemy this effect lasts 30 seconds and then with the siphon rune we get gain 32,000 uh, life for every harvested enemy. So right on to the passives. The first one I go with is Spirit Vessel and reduce the cool... What, it, what I use it for is reducing the cooldown of your Horrify Spirit Walk and Soul Harvest spells by two seconds. Um, it also comes with the nice other added ability. In addition, the next time you receive Fatal Damage, you automatically enter the Spirit Realm for two seconds and heal to 15%. So basically what it does is it allows you to die once without actually dying. Next, I go with Creeping Death. Your Haunt, Locust Swarm, and Damage Amplification from Piranhas last almost forever. So what that actually means is you get five minutes. Um, that's, that's what it does. But what we're going to be doing with the Jade Harvester set, that pretty much just means our dots are going to hit a heck of a lot harder, and then when we siphon them, it's just going to obliterate. It's called the Nuke build for a reason, so... Next, I go with Grave Injustice. Gain 1% of your maximum life and mana and reduce the cooldown of all of your skills by 1 second when an enemy dies within 20 yards. So all the enemies are going to be dying within 20 yards. That's the whole concept of the build. Uh, you got to be close enough to soul harvest them, and when you soul harvest them, they're definitely within 20 yards. So just you gain gain back some of your life and mana, and it reduces the cooldown of like your Pyranado, your soul harvest, and your... Uh, um, well, those are pretty much uh, that one the spirit walk. Next I go with pierce the veil. All of your damage is increased by 20% but your mana costs are increased by 30%. Why I do that is just the straight damage increase. So 20% with one passive hard to pass up. Let's jump into the paragons before we look at the gear. 
So movement speed to 13% just because 25% is the cap and that's what I needed in order to cap out. Next I put the rest into intelligence for the uh, all resist and the, the damage increase. The offensive tab I go full cooldown reduction. We want as much cooldown reduction as we can get. Um, attack speed is extremely useless in this build. So if you have like rings and um, like a belt and stuff like that that has attack speed, you don't necessarily need it. It will make your sheet DPS look higher, but it does absolutely nothing for you. So I go cooldown reduction, and then after that I go critical hit damage. Defense tab, I go full 50 points into life percentage because I have next to no vitality in, in this particular set of gear, so I only have 426,000, and that's with 25% life bonus. Um, then the rest I put into all resist because like I said you are going to be standing and stuff so it's going to be nice to be able to have that survivability. Next I go with resource cost reduction just so my haunts, locust swarms, um, everything is cheaper I guess. Next we go with life on hit just for like I said survivability. So let's go ahead and look at the gear. So if we get five pieces of jade harvester, <clears throat> excuse me, didn't mean to cough there. If we get five pieces of Jade, Har Jade Harvester with a Ring of Royal Grandeur, it gives us all six all six pieces. Um, I don't have the... There's a better helm than the Jade Harvester helm. You actually should get the Jade Harvester chest, uh, shoulders, gloves, legs, and boots. I'm missing the chest, and I don't have the, the better helm. It's called the Quetzalcoatl. Basically, it'll double the damage of your dots, but if we read the six piece, Soul Harvest consumes your damage over time effects on enemies, instantly dealing their remaining damage. So some pieces that you're going to want with that is cold skills to be increased as much as possible for your haunt. So I got cold skills on the bracers, and um, I got cold skills on the necklace. Uh, I need to re-roll this. I'm trying to get out of the attack speed and go with critical hit damage. I just haven't been able to get it, like at all. Uh, like I said, the Ring of Royal Grandeur, and then you just want your um, six piece of Jade Harvesters. So that's pretty much it for the build. I'd recommend using the uh, either the Enchantress or the um, Scoundrel for your, I don't know, your, whatchamacallit, your little follower. Um, so now I'll go ahead and show you a little bit of the build in action. So I've gotten a lot of feedback that I really shouldn't be speeding up this gameplay, so I'm just going to go ahead and talk over it and do it in real time. So I am in Torment 1, which I realize is kind of pathetic, but it, it just makes it to where it's smooth gameplay. So we're going to start off by hitting a couple haunts. We're going to lo er, Locust Swarm, and then we're just going to round up as much of these guys as we can, and then boom, Soul Harvest. See, everything I hit with Soul Harvest just got nuked in one, one little pass over. So we'll keep um, keep on keeping on here. Let's round up some of these guys. So you just want to run around, affect as many people with haunts as you possibly can, and then get a locust swarm going, and then all you have to do is just soul harvest, and it will just nuke everything. So let's go ahead and get it going right here so you can see. Boom, dead. So that's why they call it the nuke build. It is very, very viable in Tor Torment 6. It, it does even better. So, as you can see, I'm just wrecking stuff. I don't even have to really stop. I can just continually keep moving. So, I hope uh, you guys enjoyed the layout of this video a little bit better, where I didn't actually speed up this gameplay. And uh, if you did enjoy the video, um, and like what you saw with the build and so on and so forth, go ahead and leave a like. It really does help the channel grow. Um, I guess that's about it, guys. I will see you in the next video. I'll be doing a few more... Um, patch 2.1 videos because there was a lot of stuff that they implemented that I, I would like to talk about so you'll be seeing a lot more of those videos coming from me anyway I'll stop rambling like I always do I hope you enjoyed the video if you did please leave a like and I'll see you in the next one have a good one guys